So, you want to sell everything and move out to a farm. Well, I have five suggestions for you to consider before doing that. Okay, so you've decided that you want a taste of the good life, you're going to sell everything, get out of the hustle and bustle of town, and you're going to move out to a piece of land. That's fantastic, but there are some things which I think you should consider before doing that. And I've broken it down into five simple little things, there's obviously a million more. And if you have some suggestions, please make a comment below, because I'm not going to get to everything. So here goes, number one unexpected costs look there are always going to be surprises in life wherever you live unexpected costs everywhere but on a farm or a small holding they are multiplied because you have more space you have more things to deal with and generally the costs are higher than a typical house in the suburb some unexpected costs that we've had to deal with is putting in hundreds of meters of water line just to get a simple water feed to the house we're, we're off the water grid here in town if your water stops working you just pick up the phone speak to the municipality and hopefully someone will sort it out and you'll most likely have it resolved without having to do much more than a phone call here on the farm you have to trace hundreds of meters actually 2.4 kilometers of water pipe to see if there's a leak if that's okay we have to check the borehole to make sure that the pump is functioning. If that doesn't work, we have to have machinery to pull the pump out. It's 200 meters below the ground. And if that's broken, it needs to be fixed. So you can start to see that unexpected costs are on a completely different level. Another one for us was when the fire came through, it burnt kilometers of fencing. And you think, okay, we'll replace the fencing. You gotta buy the wire, you gotta buy the nails, you gotta buy the poles, you gotta have machinery like a tractor or something to tension the wire. You need the equipment to hold the fence to tension it. it you need labor. It, it's, it's not as straightforward as a simple house in town where if the wall gets knocked over, you get a builder to come and put it up. Here, stuff takes longer, costs more, just because there's more of it. Number two, security. Now, security is a slightly different topic out here in South Africa than it is in maybe a different country. I mean, here it's a six billion US dollar industry security in South Africa. Just so you, you know that there's some issues here. So security is a completely different matter out here on a small holding. There's a lot more of it. So you have a bigger perimeter to look after, a bigger space to worry about. Some of the things you can put in place is to physically clear a perimeter on the inside or the outside of your boundary or your fence just to keep your boundary visible at all times and that just gives you some peace of mind that there is a physical boundary around your property we also have an inner residential boundary which is gated and fenced around the house which is a second perimeter and another barrier just to help with safety we have unfortunately experienced theft and you know, security breaches here on the farm. We've had eight sheep stolen on three different occasions. I think once was in bad weather where they cut the fence, they came through and they stole the sheep without us even realizing until the next morning. So it, it is a problem, but the more security measures you can put in place, the more of a deterrent it is. Number three is you have to be a jack of all trades. You need to know some DIY. You're going to get your hands dirty at some point. Something's going to break. It needs to be fixed and you can't always phone up a professional to say hey can you please fix this or screw that fast or you know put this up it's a basic requirement here on the farm it doesn't matter if you get it wrong a few times you just have to have persistence and tenacity to just keep doing it and learning yourself until you can bodge it and get by some of the stuff that requires professionals well obviously get them involved but on a day-to-day -day basis you'll be confronted with a burst water pipe, something that's broken or fallen down, a vehicle that might have a flat tire, a trailer that needs to be re-greased for the wheels to work. Simple tasks like that just to keep things moving forward without having to pick up the phone and pay someone every time. So there's a learning curve for sure with the DIY stuff, 
and I would probably suggest getting a few basic tools to get you going. And this might cross over with unexpected costs, but I don't think you're going to get away with not having any hand tools on a farm. I would suggest a good claw hammer, a good quality, maybe pro line cordless drill or screwdriver with some bits. I suggest a pro one because they make them a bit tougher, the batteries are better and they'll last for years. I would also recommend an electric chop saw, a good set of pliers, a tape measure, a spirit level, some leather gloves and safety goggles, tool belt, that's always handy when you're working and you need your hands to be free but you need tools to be accessible, a speed square or a square to make 90 degrees or 45 degree marks on timber or whatever you're cutting or mending, a sharp box cutter or a standing knife and finally maybe a set of hand screwdrivers those are always super handy number four forward planning and preparation now because so much needs to be done on a farm it needs to be prioritized because well I assume like most of us people who come to a small holding funds are limited and you cannot just throw a huge whack of cash at stuff and just get it done it's an ongoing project that takes years to do. What you don't want is to constantly be reacting to problems. You want a forward plan and make sure you're slowly ticking off a list of priorities rather than operating in crisis mode all the time. A great example right now, going back to the water, is we can tell that the water pump in the borehole is starting to slow its output, which means that there is an issue with the pump. We know that that's gonna be a problem soon, so we are on top of it, and finding spare parts and figuring out when we can do it and how much it's gonna to cost to replace those parts. The alternative is the pump breaks, we can't provide water for the livestock, we can't provide water for the house, we can't brush our teeth, we can't go to have a shower until we fix a problem. And that's a position that you don't wanna be in. I would suggest paying attention and keeping an eye open for little things that need to be done and ranking them on some kind of simple list in the time it's gonna take you to do it the cost and the urgency. That'll give you an idea of priority. The main point I'm making is it's better to be proactive than reactive. And you'll find that out very fast if you move to a farm. Number five, and my final point for this video, is suitability and personality type. Now, not everyone is suited to living on a farm or a small holding. So it's a good idea to know yourself and what you like and what you don't like before selling up everything and moving out to the sticks. There's a ton more day-to-day -day tasks out here than there is uh, in a normal house in the burbs. And you've got to be okay with your time being taken for little menial tasks just for day-to-day -day life. Otherwise, you're gonna go mad. So something that I've come to realize since moving out to the farm is I absolutely love this lifestyle. I love being out in the space and in nature. But I really don't like raising livestock. It's just not my thing. The freedom that this place allows is sucked dry by looking after animals and tending to them from morning through to night. Especially in lambing season when there's little babies shooting out sheep everywhere and you can work into the night and get your neighbors down to help pull sheep out the backsides of other sheep and it's just messy and it's it's just not my thing. Some people love it. My dad for example, he loves it. He loves the animals. He loves dealing with all that stuff. Me? Mm -mm. So what I would say to someone who's considering a taste of the good life and getting out of the busyness and the hustle and bustle of town and moving out here, just ask yourself this question. Do you like the freedom and the tranquility and the space of being out here or do you want to work the land? It's two completely different scenarios. So to summarize then, it's to know that there are going to be unexpected costs and they're going to be bigger than you think. Number two, remember you're isolated and security is your responsibility. Number three, you got to be a jack of all trades, you got to be willing to get your hands dirty or maybe you're super rich and you can just throw some cash at every situation but I would suggest learning those practical skills is way more fun than just watching some guy do it. Number four, you got to keep on top of the jobs otherwise this farm will eat you alive financially. Number five, consider whether you're suited to a lifestyle out here and everything that it brings and whether you're willing to give up the ease and the convenience of town. I can say the reward 
is worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these five little nuggets. I've not, obviously not covered everything, so if you have any suggestions, please comment below. Like, subscribe, share, follow along. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.